Hi Scorpio, welcome to your um, new moon in Libra reading, a solar eclipse as well, all in Libra, and that's for October 14th, 2023. Uh, new moons bring in new cycles, and we're looking at a very strange period uh, because it's a solar eclipse. Uh, normally I would say this is two to four week period, but I'm going to extend that to six months to a year. I know that sounds rough, but um, that's what solar or that's what eclipses do. They extend the energy. Um, the theme for your next two weeks or the theme that this reading is going in is Ascended Masters. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe some people believe in this. I'm assuming that if you're watching tarot readings, you probably um, understand this card. Uh, masters that have come before, you know, some that are named <laughs> like Buddha or Jesus or um, there's a plethora. Um, but for me, it also means that is your higher self or by extension, um, unconditional love. I think is the same thing for me um, because I think that's the trajectory that we are all headed on um, and so this is a bit heavy I would say or uh, deeper than most of the energies it is different because we're looking at that number seven and seven is a unique um, energy it's uniqueness, it's not cookie cutter, it's not, uh, it's it's out of the box, right? So this can be an interesting reading. Let's see what's going to happen here. Um, your focus for the next two weeks would be the moon card, and that's intuition, secrets, dream world, instinct, uh, hidden, or cycles. Um, yeah, the moon can hide things, right? Or it just uh, makes things sort of unclear. It gives the appearance of sort of an otherworldliness. It does bring up your intuition, your psychic abilities, um, but strange things can happen uh, with the moon card. And again, it's almost like you can't put your finger on it. You feel, it's like you have the feels, right? I feel this, but there's nothing to give you that concrete evidence. It just feels that way, and that's the otherworldliness. Um, it's an interesting energy, uh, but the things that can come up can come through your subconscious, through your deep subconscious, with the moon. Um, pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to symbols and signals and, um, you know, reoccurring themes. Those all have a message for you. Um, but again, it's secretive, so you'd have to kind of, let's say, you know, um, a particular bird lands on your window seal. Let's say it's a woodpecker, right? And it just, every day you see him, or he comes around, or he's been around lately, or, you know, a pack of raccoons, or something like that. Look uh, for the totem card on the internet, or books, or you know, do a little research and see what that animal means, or even go within and be like, okay, so what does a raccoon do? He's wearing a mask, and what does a mask mean to me? You know what I mean? Like, follow the trail. All right, let's see how this applies to you for the new moon, which is bringing in new cycles. Okay, you're starting off with a page of wands, so this is a fiery type person. Um, this is uh, my Sagittarius card, and um, there are the people who have a great philosophy in life, um, but they believe it so wholeheartedly that they rarely extend that, um, <laughs> uh, I want to say privilege, but it's not a privilege to have a, a philosophy. Uh, they rarely extend that to anyone else, right? Because their motto is, even when I'm wrong, I'm right. They really believe in their philosophy. It's a young energy. It's an expansive energy. These people are great band members. They like to be around people. They're very social, um, 
quite talkative, uh, fiery, passionate, um, and a very good friend. There's the energy of biding your time with the Nine of Wands. You may be biding your time with this person, or they may be biding it with you. This is uh, all the experiences that you've had in regards to maybe, let's say, this person, right? You've had a lot of experience with them. Uh, some good, some not so good, because this is called the Walking Wounded card. And... Um, you know, you can be looking back on what you have experienced with this person. And um, again, it doesn't have to be Sagittarius. It can be any of the fire signs or just somebody who's behaving that way. So the Nine of Wands is saying, um, it's kind of like being on the precipice of something here. But it is taking a defensive stance. And even kind of a, a little bit like, I mean, literally, he's looking over his shoulder, right? So it's, it's kind of like, I've, I've been through this, I know this energy, I know these types of people, and I am not so willing to extend myself this time. However, it is biding your time, and so when there is a right moment to act, you will. We'll see what that action is uh, in a bit, but let's go further for now. Okay, you see things clearly. You have clarity here. You're starting a new mental cycle, a new cycle of action. And um, let's say this is you, right? Your philosophies have expanded, and through your experiences, you've come to sort of new realizations, new understandings. And through that clarity, uh, you can um, take new action. With... Um, with the energy of, of honesty and triumph and security, you're secure in your knowledge, you're secure in your understanding of situations, which actually kind of goes well with the Page of Wands, right? It's like I said, their, um, their belief in their philosophy through their experiences uh, make them uh, solid in their philosophy, okay? I mean, other people have had different experiences, that sort of thing, but these people do not waffle. This is their <laughs> belief, and that's that. And so that could very well be the Ace of Swords here for you. It is my Yes card, so you may be saying yes to something um, and taking action afterwards, but there's clarity with it. Um, this is the Triumph and Security card. It's the Excalibur card, so only the true can wield its energy or its power, or its truth, okay? That's a really good card, and it is my yes card, so you could be getting a yes answer or something in the affirmative. All right, and with that, you have the three of wands. Now, these are people um, and situations that are allies. And by that, I mean maybe we gather the right people around us to move us in new directions. Um, and if it's not a person, it can be um, so a person with experience, right? It can also be um, workshops, books, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of energy, things that give us a leg up uh, for any kind of um, competition that we may um, come across in our business dealings or uh, romantically or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because wands are about your passions, right? It's that ego-driven energy, and as long as it's in balance, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with a balanced ego. Okay. Three is a creative number. Very nice. Very nice. For me, the Ascended Master does feel like a self, uh, unconditional love here, because you're looking for now people um, that can help you along the way that you want to go is my feeling here hmm. interesting and you do have a lot of uh, wands so there's a fiery passionate energy in a good way so far <laughs> we'll see okay so 
more air you have these six of swords um this is moving on moving on from dramas moving on from instability looking for a uh, balance and especially mental and emotional balance in this case because we are traveling on water and um, the little choppy water here turns placid as we move towards the uh, to the calmer waters so do our emotions calm down as well as our thinking but this is a place where we can take these swords, right? These thoughts, these lessons that we've learned and kind of um, bring balance to the situation. And it helps us to calm down. But there can be an actual moving on. Um, you may move from one place to another or you may have to travel. There may be some uh, travel over water, um, boats, ferries. Uh, planes, right? But there is this moving on energy with the Six of Swords. So we can be moving on from someone that we've had some experiences with that we'd rather not anymore. Can be that as well. <laughs> okay, so that feels more like we're pushing out distractions to get work done, right? Maybe all of this was distraction and um, we're taking new steps to be like, okay, I'm going to move on from this situation that's caused me some trouble. I'm on a new cycle here and with the help of those around me, I can really hone in on what it is I'm creating, my work, work that I love to do. Uh, it can be overtime, the Eight of Pentacles, but we often don't mind because it's work that we're good at and we can just whip it out. It's that kind of energy. Um, it can also help with your health because the Eight of Pentacles for me is also stable and good health. So that can also be part of the uh, equation here it, because remember, we are the walking wounded in this, in this scenario and we want to balance that out as well. And certainly emotion, emotional and mental energy uh, have a direct effect on your physical. So that's also very possible here. Yeah, these are dramas that were played out. And probably ego-driven, because that's what wands are, right? They're your passions. Um, this was a drama that was played out or is, uh, is maybe it's still playing out for you at the moment. Uh, but like I said, we, we leave this situation. And the interesting thing about this card is it always says, uh, if you want to avoid this drama, check your ego at the door, leave, dissolve ego. Um, this is something that could be hard won as well. Um that it wasn't an easy win. And you're the triumphant person here. You have won out. But it doesn't feel like a complete win because people have been hurt. Um, and, you know, maybe you're just somebody who doesn't want to hurt anybody. But there are casualties. And so it's not a complete win. However, <laughs> you are the victor here with the Ace of Swords. At least you can feel that way. Do you know what I mean? And I think it has a lot more to do, it feels to me like it has a lot more to do with truth. Because the truth of the matter is, was this person an ally? Was this person helpful to you in moving forward? Um, right? Mm, really nice, the magician. And again, this is a focus card. And if we're looking at Ascended Masters, this is your higher self. This is the solar male electric energy, right? That yang energy, not yang, yang. And um, it is mastering a skill, which I definitely see you uh, accomplishing if that's what you want to do through the help of people. Again, through the help of other people. Um, and these people may be at a distance. Right? He's looking out into the larger world. It's a good card. It's your focus card. 
and it's being skillful. So it feels to me that once you um, bring some closure to this situation, you're on a completely different path of success here. Yeah, look at that. The Hermit card. All right, well, I do feel like there's some time that you want to spend on, your, uh, on yourself alone through both of these cards. But the Hermit card is taking that information. It's re really reiterating this, and it's on a higher level, obviously, because it's a major arcana, so that's an internal energy. Um, but it kind of is uh, reiterating the same information of taking that knowledge, taking, you know, here's the, here's the drama that played out right before the six, right? And these are the instabilities. Five is unstable, and it's change. And this change may have been very difficult. Um, but we take the lessons that we learn from the Five of Swords and we go somewhere else to understand where or to understand it, right? To synthesize it, to bring it all together and to bring balance to the situation. And the Hermit does the same thing. The Hermit takes this information, he digests it, and he turns knowledge into wisdom. Um, now, this can be on a few levels. This can be also with this information that you're dealing with here, the drama that played out, but it can also be the things, the mastery, the skill level that you are um, learning here where work is concerned. And because this has come out with the work card, I think you're going to be somebody who's very good in your field. Um, perhaps then you will become the ally to other people and can teach other people what you have learned from this. And of course it can include uh, this drama being played out as well, but um, the Hermit card is also feeling like we kind of want to be on our own a little bit, um, or we have a feeling of loneliness, that can also be it. And again, because of this, you may just turn your attention to your work and, um, and concentrate on that. Because again, the Eight of Pentacles is um, removing any distraction and just getting the job done. And um, it feels to me like that's something you can do after you've kind of assimilated all of this energy, right? All of this information, the experiences that you've had. Um, two nines, right? That's, that's the accumulation of experience. And uh, again, pulling it all together and understanding it. That's nine. Okay, so do I see any, you know, spiritual stuff here with that? In a way I do, in a way I do. But I do have the feeling that you have help from the other side. Uh, so that's a very personal thing. And again, with the moon card, you may may feel this or may um, see uh, signals and messages and that sort of thing through your dreams or around the, the new moon um, because that's when your psychic and intuitive energy is at its height. But because you're water anyway, you probably have very good intuition and so it can be any time through this, but I would say pay special attention when you're near water, in water, like bathing or showering, but also when you're sleeping, pay attention to your dreams. And I personally would have a little dream journal next to me so I could write down anything that was significant. Um, because the moment that you uh, move <laughs> from the position of where you're having that dream, the circuit is broken. So... Um, that's why it's so hard to kind of recover dreams sometimes. Well, what does the spirit want you to know? You have the sun card. That's wonderful. Now, you have a little bit of both here in this reading. There's happiness and there's discontent. Okay? Um, there's authentic authenticity. That's the ace of swords. That's be true, be you. Right? Live your honesty. Optimism. I think that has a lot to do with the magician card. And I also think that has a lot to do with even the Eight of Pentacles because it's a lot of power behind something. 
um, pessimism, yeah, for sure, on this end of, of the reading, and even that Nine of Wands. Um, mania. Well, I think this energy is quite manic, because it's, it's, I mean, people can say really horrific things in the throes of aggression. Um, optimism, well, that's the sun. It's also the magician card and the people and the allies that you come across or you being an ally is also really important here. For me, this is a very social card. So I do feel like after this is finished, um, there can be some sociability. However, this for me links very nicely to the Ascended Masters because this is the Sun card. Nothing can dim um, the energy of the Sun, right? Clouds can go by, but you could still feel that, feel that energy. You can still feel it radiating and it, it, the energy goes right through. Um, but it is enlightenment as well. Right? We understand. We've taken all this information and we've digested it and we understand it fully. We are now enlightened um, in a particular situation in our life. It's a really good card. And it brings you health and, and happiness. And after this situation, I think that's something very necessary. So well done. Thank you for listening. I will return in two weeks with a full moon reading. Um, I appreciate your time, and I hope more than anything that it's been helpful. Take good care.